called the king of instruments, the pipe organ. 2,600 years old, they think. It goes back to Roman times, in fact. <clears throat> Excuse me. A pipe organ can have as many as 30,000 individual pieces, and they can run from anything as small as a pencil to something as large as a tractor trailer. There is no sound like it. And the Bay Area, San Francisco, happens to have a magnificent pipe organ that at the moment you can't hear. Let me explain that to you, but first of all, let me introduce to you uh, two folks who are going to help me explain, uh, Gerard Montana and Ken Cowan. Uh, Ken is a performer, an organist, and Gerard Montana is uh, with the San Francisco chapter of the American Guild of Organists. I assume you're also a member of the, of the Guild. Absolutely. <laughs> Naturally. Uh, and uh, the person that you saw performing there just a moment ago, by the way, uh, that was, in fact, uh, Ken performing on the Grace Cathedral uh, organ, because they're going to have a concert and you were rehearsing a little bit? That's right, yeah, the other night. Okay, so we already have some nice pipe organs here in the Bay Area, but let's talk about this particular famous one. And I want to start with a picture. This is the, this is the organ as it originally appeared uh, in 1906? 1915. 1915, sorry, 1906. Okay. The Panama Pacific Exposition. And uh, it was just built as a display, uh, I mean as a performing organ, obviously. It was very popular at the time. Many, many people came to hear the organ. It was a huge... Uh, Where was it? It was in the uh, aud special auditorium that was built f specifically for that instrument for concerts. How big was it? Well, it uh, was one of the largest instruments in the world at the time when it was built. And um, many, many thousands of pipes. Many people don't see that. You just look at the display pipes and think, well, that's it. Mm -hmm. But it, uh, it was uh, played by Edwin Lemaire, who was the most famous organist of his time. The E. Power, well, I don't even know if people know E. Power Biggs anymore. There are no famous, there was a time actually in America when there seemed like there were a couple of big deal organists. These days, I don't know that they're the same popular uh, imagination big names. They're not household names exactly. I think in the 50s, particularly when the LP record came out, there were a couple of people that rode that wave of publicity at first, and so um, there were some popular uh, right. organists then. Okay, so they disassembled the thing after the exposition. And it was given to the citizens of San Francisco as a gift, mm -hmm. and uh, we built a special hall for it, actually Civic Auditorium which was called Municipal Auditorium. At the, uh, the Municipal Auditorium was the exposition organ. That organ was actually literally built for, I'm sorry, that uh, hall, was, hall built was built for the organ? For the organ, yeah. Wow, there's a little known fact, what we now think of as the Bill Graham Civic Auditorium. So uh, this, this is what it looked like when it was put for the exposition. Oh, I'm sorry, did I get the wrong picture? Right, and then the I'm next sorry, page. I'm sorry, a learning disability I have. I <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> the next page, and that's what the instrument looked like. Now, those pipes are the size of a three-story office building. Uh, so just to understand the scale of it, it's an enormous instrument. You can just see down here, that's the console, I guess. It's, it's, a, it's about as big, little no, than your finger now. Console. Oh, oh, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> that's the console down at the very bottom. So these are massive. Okay, so then what happened? Well, the organ was played for years. Actually, Edwin Lemaire was the municipal organist for San Francisco. At the time, he was the highest paid uh, municipal organist in the country. And uh, he was a very interesting character. Uh, he'd be on pe the cover of People magazine uh, if he was around today. So yeah. he was a very flamboyant and interesting guy, but a wonderful player. He was actually British. and. Um, and then the organ was played for many years, and uh, until uh, the, the uh, Loma Prieta earthquake uh, did quite a bit of damage to it. And so we had sent it back to Hartford, Connecticut, completely rebuilt, and it's sitting in crates under the basement of City Hall right now. Why do you think that, um, that there is such fascination about organs? I mean, what is there about them that intrigues us so much? I think it's the most fantastic gadget there <laughs> is available amongst musical instruments, at least. That's where it starts. Mm -hmm. Also, the, just the, the palette of tone color that's available, you can go from a whisper to a roar in, uh, in, in a second. Uh, yeah, let's, um, uh, let's go ahead and uh, I'd like to listen to this for just a moment. Uh, what are you performing here? Oh, it's a clip of a, a, a Wagner transcription, uh, the Prelude to Die Meistersinger.
tell you, you know, I've spent a lot of time watching organists work, and it's like watching a one-arm paper hanger. It really is. I mean, you got you got two hands, you got two feet, and you're doing five things at the same time. And I cannot, for the life of me, figure out how. So this is an example of one of the pipes. Uh, and the variety of pipes, so these are metal pipes, but you also have wood woodwind type pipes, which, right. oops, sorry, Sounds woodwind like type pipes, which actually um, simulate uh, different types of sound, so. It's a flute sound? Mm-hmm, and all of these different pipes uh, operate with air being pushed through the bottom. Um, obviously not a person running around down there. Uh, blowing into them as, <laughs> as I right. was. So you got a big job ahead of you, putting all these in a place where they can all be uh, controlled by one guy like him. What's, what's going on with that? How are you doing that? Well, the, the, each pipe is handmade, and uh, each one is a different size. Mm -hmm. And uh, then they all have to be tuned and voiced. And, and how much money is that going to cost us to get our organ back? <laughs> <laughs> well, it will be expensive, and we are looking for some very rich people to help us mm -hmm. with that, because it is going to take quite a bit of money. It's but there's also, you're also raising money. That's right. And so that's why we have them here. No, I'm not just to talk about this magnificent organ, but also tell you about an event that's taking place where you can not only enjoy the fabulous sounds uh, of an organ being performed by Ken Cowan at Grace Cathedral, and they do have a magnificent pipe organ as well. Uh, today at 4 p.m., uh, it's at Grace Cathedral. Uh, you can go to gracecathedral.org if you want to get details and exactly uh, where, <laughs> if you don't know where Grace Cathedral is, how to get there. Uh, are you in, is there an admission fee for this? Just a suge suggested donation. Mm -hmm. Okay, and a wonderful way to hear great music and also to bring more great music to us because, gosh, it is just a magnificent sound. Thank you both. Can we, uh, I, we probably have to go back to Marty and Isabel, right? But could, could we go out with like a little music in the background? Do you think you could get that playing just so we can he hear a little bit of, uh, of Tannhäuser uh, <laughs> in the background here? <laughs> Up next. You can't beat this. Up next, <laughs> sports. Sports, ladies and gentlemen, with Vernon Glenn coming up on Cron 4 News Weekend.